Okay guys, I've been meaning to do this review of this drone simulator for quite some time. For a while there I was sick and I've just been overwhelmed with work trying to get Swarm all uh, up and running and together. So I'm finally able to get to this. So I'm really looking forward to you guys learning about this and uh, hopefully getting involved with it. I think it's a really great tool company said they have plans to actually include search and rescue scenarios so you know you all know how that is uh, promises but wait for it to be seen but even if they don't do that um, I think this program is really really valuable uh, in training and just muscle memory and you know flight simulators have always been not quite like the real thing, but they still have a lot of value. Even the old Microsoft flight seminar, I used to do that a lot for flying, and uh, I actually fly real planes too. And it was really valuable for instrument, not so much for real world type feel, but instrument practice was amazing. And there's actually been cases of people that uh, scored extremely well in the Air Force uh, because they had done flight simulator so much. So we know these things are valuable and can be used. And uh, so the <clears throat> Little Arm Studio people were nice enough to send me one of their units to try out as a training tool for our swarm pilots. Uh, and in this case, it's, uh, it's a flight controller, which obviously is going to be different than maybe if you use a DJI. Um, but the thing is, the DJI of course has its own simulator built in for that but not all of them and then their enterprise product which is probably extremely good but it's also thousands of dollars but uh, a lot of corporate companies that's how they're training their pilots to fly like a matrice or one of the higher end drones but on the low end of the scale and this is the best price i've seen this uh, zephyr simulator it's called uh, really is a great tool and the other thing that's kind of cool about it that I'll show you on the screen here is we can set it up as a corporate sort of an account and actually use it to have pilots show that they've completed different training missions which might be something we could use in the future to make sure people are being better prepared and, and keeping up on training and um, you know, at the very least, if you're just starting to fly drones, this is certainly a lot cheaper way to learn and crash than it is to go out and buy a drone. I think all of us can attest that when we started flying, everybody's crashed, everybody's put it in trees, you got flyaways, there's all kinds of things that happens, and it sure is cheaper to do it this way than, than wrecking your, your brand new drone you just got. We're starting to spend a lot of money on these things, and I'd rather crash in the simulator than in the real world. So anyway, I'm just going to show you some basics of the Zephyr simulator because there's a lot of reviews already out there on the complete product and how-to how videos and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I'm not going to waste any time doing that because, you know, you can just go watch those, and I'll, I'll put links for those, uh, two or three of the better ones that I've found. And I'm just going to show you the basics, uh, kind of what it looks like if you would log in as a student. Uh, we've They created us like a, a corporate account for Swarm, and that is how all of our pilots would uh, would log in. You don't have to, but, but if you do that, we'd be able to tr create and track uh, training scenarios. So let me bring up the uh, screens for this and show you guys how this works. So when you launch the uh, Little Arms Launcher, it's called, you'll see this screen pop up here. Uh, and there's a couple videos you can watch too. Uh, if there are updates, you do it from this, from this screen. So what you do is, in our case for our sample, you go here to launch. And then uh, the screen that props up here, you've got some different login options. And for our purposes here, I'm going to use the Swarm, the corporate one that they set up for us. Um, 
Let's see, I'm going to have to look up my password here. So you'll basically log in here uh, and you'll see we have Swarm Search and Rescue. Uh, if you are just a subscriber or some institution, so there's a bunch of different uh, login types. We'll just use the Swarm Search and Rescue one. So we're going to launch that and uh, the way you basically use this is you're going to set up your controller you're going to set up the type of drone you fly and you're going to set up a scenario. You're going to pick a scenario that you want to fly and this is where they'll probably put in search and rescue type scenarios. And there's a lot of things I can picture that are going to be really, really valuable on that. You know, practice maybe on how high you should be flying. Um, maybe how to use the camera, uh, fly patterns how to capture your position and report that back to ground teams, all kinds of really good stuff. So let's just go over the basics. We'll assume you already did the controller and you can look at those other videos to see how to set all this stuff up because I don't want to have to take the time to redo all that stuff. Uh, we'll just go directly into the scenario. I don't have my controller hooked up right now, so I guess I'll have to do that. Um, but let's go ahead and do this. So we'll load the scenario and you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, different scenarios here and basic training is where you're going to start which you'll see that what that does is it takes you through uh, a whole bunch of different flight modes and gets down all the basics of directions and flying when the drone's facing backwards and um, you know, even the view that you have of the drone is is realistic enough to where, you know, you're standing on the ground and the drone flies away. You lose sight of that drone pretty darn quickly. And a lot of times when you're flying, you can lose it all together. And it's good to practice on how to look at some of the information on your screen, on your controller to figure out where your drone is and which direction it's heading. And um, believe me, you're going to run into that, too. So that's uh, the basics of, of these screens. Um, got a tutorial on using the software, basic training, and then you got a bunch of different flight modes. If you're in drone racing, you've got modes for that. Uh, so we can only hope that they come up with uh, search and rescue scenarios, and who knows, they might even work with us to actually create those that are going to be useful for us. Uh, be kind of cool to even have a thermal mode. So who knows what will come up out of this. Um, so any of you guys that are used to this or use this, uh, have any information that you think might be helpful to other pilots, please let us know. Give us some feedback. Um, I'll go ahead and load the, I don't know, let's load this, uh, this hill scenario just so you can see what it looks like here. Um, yeah, please give us some feedback if you have any, any experience with this, uh, good, bad, anything and uh, let us know. So here we are, we're going to select uh, free flight and I'm going to fly a Phantom 4 and here you go. Uh, the only thing that I saw that was a little bit weird on this controller is the the stick movements obviously work uh, pretty much like the real world. They don't have the exact same feel obviously but that's even tweakable and you can really hone it in to make it feel more realistic. Uh, but the camera too, you have to set up the buttons for, for running the camera while you're up there. Otherwise, by default, uh, it may not make real sense to you. But you can make this very, very uh, realistic. And, um, you know, this little screen down here is going to simulate your, your view through the camera and you'll have uh, a whole bunch of other modes that you can play with too. So, uh, I really recommend you guys give this a try and you know when it's winter uh, or off season or the weather's bad and you just can't get out and fly this is sure a great and inexpensive way to practice and I uh, really think this has got some value and I think you guys will find it works really good too so please check it out um, like I said these guys were nice enough to send it out to us uh, and I'd like to see them supported because that'll help them further develop it and go ahead and create those modules that we need. You know, enough people get on board and use the product. And, you know, there are some people that complain about that price range, but you got to realize you're buying a, a controller that's uh, probably the bulk of that price there, which you do not have to do. You can also buy just the software. 
Um, but I think it's very reasonably priced, especially when you figure a lot of us are spending 1500 2500 and more for our drones. Uh, this is a lot better way to practice, and it's extremely reasonable and is going to be valuable for years to come. So please check it out. Please support them. And uh, like I said, I'll put links to the other videos that I've already seen. They're really good out there. There's at least three or four I've found. And, and uh, let's support these guys, okay? Thanks a lot. Hey, guys. One other quick note I'd like to mention. Um, people complain all the time about cost for programs. And because I come from a programming background, I have a higher than average appreciation of what it takes to produce software. My point is that if you want to see programs stay around and new innovations come out, you must support the developers. With this in mind, please support Little Arm Studios and let's help them create a great training product for our pilots. Thanks for your time, guys, and safe flying.